week or so leading up to conferences or report cards, I will just jot down little things that I see, but I like kind of getting a bigger picture of the students in my class because when they are here sitting and learning, they're doing what I want them to do. They're totally different kids outside of school. And so it's always nice to kind of be brought back to, hey, we are teaching children. How are you? Do you have anything you really want to talk about? Is there anything you'd like to learn more about how we do in the classroom? Is there anything I can clarify for you? What is something that you like might be concerned about? Hi, sweet friend, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. This is week, I think, 10 of school. If you're new here, I teach first grade in Las Vegas. I'm on my prep time, today's Monday. We have no school on Friday, so it is a shorter week. It's also parent-teacher conference week. A little bit about my conferences. I use ESGI to test my kids. Obviously, we have paper and pencil tests too, but a lot of the phonics, phonemic awareness, um, the sight words are in here, have math, and I record a couple of other things in ESGI. I just pull them to my back table. I talk about this all the time. Give your kids a fidget to test with. These are my favorite fidgets. I have a code for them. I'll link them down below. But anyways, um, so in preparation for conferences, usually like the week or so before, I try to update all of my ESGI data for my kids. And the other thing that I do, and again, I mentioned this before, is I have a clipboard and it has everybody's names on it. If you use my small group notes template that I've talked about and shared before. I'm actually using that this time around because it's already like it has everybody's names and it's already done for me and I get a box for every kid. In the past I've just written their names on a clipboard. The week or so leading up to conferences or report cards I will just jot down little things that I see, little behavior notes. Um, I try to find things that they're doing well. That honestly just helps me because I do not have the world's best memory so if I can take some time throughout the week to kind of write down some of those notes it helps me a lot more when I'm doing conferences so in the past I have used sign up genius for conferences actually I have a whole video on how I do parent teacher conferences if you want to check it out up here this year I tried out Calendly and I don't know if you use it there's a lot of teachers at my school that use it and I tried it and it was just so glitchy I don't know it was very frustrating that's what I'm using this year instead of sign up genius I don't know next time I might just do the whole sign up genius because I had a lot of issues or maybe I'll give it another shot but I have a couple of conferences each day after school this week and the way that it works here in my district which is different from times in the past is we have Friday off and that is our conference day but you can also have conferences anytime throughout this week if you choose to the thing is we don't get paid if we come in earlier state after school like I'm not getting paid for that but I also cannot fit every single person in on Friday so I offered up a few more times um, so my schedule I have a couple today a couple tomorrow a couple on Wednesday a couple on Thursday and most of mine are on Friday which is how I set it up so that is parent-teacher conferences. I'll update you throughout the week on how they go. But um, my kids were excited this morning when they came in, saw we got a Chromebook cart. I did move my little shelf, I think I already showed you, but I moved my little shelf over here. It is not organized, but it is what it is. So, happy Monday. We have practiced S blends. We have practiced L blends. Today, we're gonna be doing R blends, like in the word tree or free. Do you hear that er sound? Yes. Okay, what's this a picture of? Crab. A crab. Let's stretch all the sounds. Ready? Er, a, b. How many sounds? Four. Four. Do you hear a blend in the beginning? Cur. Cur. Say it. Cur. Everyone stand up. Everyone sit down. Everyone stand up. Everyone sit down. Oh. I need your eyes on me. What's the blend in the beginning of crab? C R. C R. Ready? C R. Cur. What's that vowel sound? Ah. ah. Crab. B. B. Good. Crab. Crab. This is a picture of a drum. Say drum. S R. So close. I want you to wait for this call, okay? Say drum. Good. Do you hear the blend? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Jur. Say with me. Jur. 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 D. 
R. Good. Listen to the vowel sound. Ready? Jer. Uh. What's that vowel sound? Uh. uh. Hold on. I hear lots of little voices. I want you to stay with me. Jer. Uh. Good. What's this word? Drum. Good. This is a picture of what? A garbage. It could be garbage, but what's something else it could be? Trash. Trash. Now watch me. Trash. It sounds like ch, but it's not. This word, this word is just like the word tree. When we say tree, it sounds a little bit like ch. It sounds like this. Ch, tree, but it's not. It's tr, okay? Chur, chur, okay? Trash. Spell it chur. T R. Good. Ready? Listen to that vowel sound. Chur. Ah. What's my secret for? S H. S H. Good. This is a brush. Ready? The blend at the beginning. Yes, listen. I want to hear every sound. Ready? Good. What happened to those two letters? They got mixed together in the what? In the blender. So now they sound squished. Brush. Okay, what's the picture of? It sounds like sh, but it's not. It's a T. R. Good. A. Good. This is a vowel team. Our only vowel team that has an A is A. I. Nice job. Tr. A. Mm. What's the blend? Per. Good. R. Wait, guys. The vowel sound you hear in printer sound. If, if, if. I says if, if, if. to repeat it. Let's try it. Ready? Ack. Sack. Whack. Flack. Flack. I'm going to repeat the two words that start with the same first sound. Kitten. Kindness. Meeting. Which two? Kitten. Kindness. Good. They start with the same first sound. Right? W e k wink l a k e d feed s a b s a a e e a a or they could say a e i o Okay, so you're gonna repeat the middle sound and tell me if it's short or long. Okay, ready? Bat. Bat. Ah. Short. Good. Hid. Hid. Eh. Short. Dug. Short. Good. Rip. What? 
Good. Nod. Nod. Let. Let. Good. Job. Job. Let me hear all the sounds. Cute. Say fill. Fill. Let me hear all the sounds. Ew. Say nap. Nap. Let me hear all the sounds. Say fill. Fill. Without the f. Ew. Say game. Game. Without the g. Game. Good. Say loan. No. Without the l. Oh. Say cat. Cat. Say reach. Reach. Change the r to a l. Reach. Hey, my friend, your shoes need to be on your feet and not your hands. No, it's okay. Say lace. lace. Change the l to a r. Lace. Say soon. soon. Change the s to a n. Soon. People thought the earth was the center of the universe. People used to think that what was the center of the universe? The earth. The earth, is that true? No. No, so I wonder how we figured out that the earth is not the center. Turn and talk to your friend. How do you think we figured it out? Oh, my turn? My turn. I heard some really cool words. Some of you used the word astronauts. We used to think that the earth was the very, very center of the universe. We know that's not true now, but let's learn about how they figured that out. Scientists use tools to investigate the world around them and collect information. So what kind of tools can help us see things? Telescope. What if I want to look at something that's close? What can I use? Mm -hmm. A magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. I'm going to start by drawing the tripod of the telescope. That's the piece that holds it up. So they have a tripod to help keep it still. Watch me. Ready? Now we're going to draw this piece right here that holds the telescope kind of like a square. Our telescope is pointing where? To the middle. To the moon, it's pointing up to the moon or up to the sky, right? Yeah. So where our telescope is going to face this way. You see my pencil? Yes. Okay, so our lens is going to be way up here. Okay, now telescope is a longer word. So should I start it right over here? No. No, I need more space so I can put it up here. I did this. That's perfect. Or I can put it down here. I'm probably going to put it up here. Say telescope. Telescope. Okay, ready? Syllables. Tell. S go. How many syllables? Three. Okay, no, Do it with me. Here. Tell S go. What's the first syllable? Tell. 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 Good. Go. 
you make a number sentence with these three numbers? Is it possible? Who wants to share what number sentence they wrote? All right, pause. She said, read it with me. Two plus, read it with me. Two plus five equals seven. Can that work? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. If I see you drawing, I'm going to what? Take it away. Is two plus five seven? Yes. Yes. Does that work? Yes. Yes. Did anybody write something different? Yes. Looking around. I want you to try to write a different number sentence. Go. My turn. Who wants to share what they said? They said five plus two equals seven. Read it with me. Your marker. Caps on? Good. Read it with me. Five plus two equals seven. Does that work? Yes. Yes. on my side, I can These two numbers. This what I thought again. What else could I do? Did anybody have a different number sentence? What did you say? Seven minus five equals two. Seven minus five Seven equals two. Now he did not use addition. He used sub. Show me seven. Take away five. How many are left? Two. Two. Does that work? Yes. yes, there is one more number sentence. I want to see if you can figure it out. We have 2 plus 5 equals 7. We have 5 plus 2 equals 7. We have 7 take away 5 equals 2. Can you figure out our last one? I'll give you a hint. Subtraction. Okay, we said we could take away 5 and equals 2. Or we could take away 2 and equals 5. So I can say 7 minus 2 equals Five. That's what I said. I love it. So these numbers, my friends, are called something so super sweet. Do you want to hear what it's called? Yeah. It's called a fact family. Say it with me. Fact, fact family. family. So whenever we have numbers in a number bond like this, five, oops, and two, we can show... Sorry, here we go. We can show lots of different ways to write number sentences with these numbers using our fact family. And each number gets used just one time. It is a fact family. Say it, fact family. Good, we're gonna practice some fact families together. Five, seven. We could say two plus five equals seven. We could say five plus two equals seven. Seven, good. Those are all gonna equal two. Yeah. Or I could say seven take away five equals two. 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 How do I know this is two? Because mine is there. And then take away five. Good, that's a good point. First said this is a minus sign. Whenever we do subtraction, we start with the bigger. Good, so I can say seven minus five, or I could say seven minus two equals five. Five. We are only using each number one time. This is their family. Okay, you wanna try one more? Yes. Okay, my next one over here. My fact family is one, three, four. Or I could say four minus three equals one. One, you are going to get an opportunity to do it. I had a parent-teacher conference after school, and then I had another one that I just finished that was a Google Meet, which was so weird. Logging into Google Meet gave me flashbacks for sure. Never, ever want to experience teaching online again, ever. I usually get students um, writing journals to share with the parents. 
I have the like test data that we take from our maps and I have some other like assessments that I've done in class that I share with them too. I also share with them ESGI data, which I've already talked to you guys about. And again, I'll leave my discount code in the link for you down below because it makes it really easy to communicate to parents what their children need. So those are the main things. Um, and I kind of structure it by just like starting off with like, hey, you should know, like for example, one of the students I did, um, so-and-so is a sweetheart, they're enjoying school, um, they're positive, I love having them in class, I love having all my kids in class, but you know. So I'll start it off that way and then I'll kind of go into the things that they're doing really well at and then things that we can work together on. And then during the conference, I'll just kind of know anything that we talk about. So one of my students, the parents, and this I feel like this is helpful, especially if you're someone who's going into teaching to just know the kind of things that are discussed at conferences. So we talk about all those things that I just mentioned as well as um, with one of my students today, the parents wanted to know how they could support their child at home with reading. So questions they could ask and ways that they could support them. Um, and I told them about some like passion projects that I'll do. So not with all my kids, but some of my kids who like can read and absorb information and can actually read to learn. We have these like passion projects so they can get like a topic and go home and like learn about it and present it to the class. So kind of those like extension things to where they're le like learning about something that they're interested in. We talk about that we talked about programs they can access at home so like our rocket math program that the students can do and then I always try to offer parents as much support as I can so I usually end up every conference being like oh let me send you home this or let me send you home this or let me send you home this resource so one of the resources that I'll be sending home with another student is from this uh, all students can shine and it's this intervention pack. It starts with letter sounds, say the sound, but then it moves into CBC words like this. And then it moves into like blends and digraphs and um, E at the end. So I can send home and even like pointing to the words in a sentence when you read the sentence. So these are really great to send home with parents. Um, in kindergarten and first grade struggling readers um, I also like to offer like if they want to I don't push a lot of homework at home like I don't and I always stress to my parents like if they're done like don't push it a lot of times if you're sending something home it's something they need to work on so it's gonna be harder and I just and we work so hard in class but usually the parents want to help out in some way shape or form so anyways I'm sending that home with one parent um, and then also like phonemic awareness games, like rhyming games. Um, so similar to the Hegarty that I did with my class today where I said like, okay, ack, tell me words that have ack. Crack, whack, sack, dack, lack, fack. Um, those kind of things. So just games they can play at home. I always, like I said, I sent home the SGI. And then any other notes, like do they want me to work on um, their students confidence do they want me to work on specifically their sentence writing are they speaking in complete sentences those kind of things i note all of that during the conference so i'll kind of keep you updated as i go about just some of the things that like parents in general are asking about or wanting more inf information on and how i kind of um, go about that and like what resources i use to give parents because that's another thing that is helpful too so i am going to go home and I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, today is Tuesday. It's funny how different it feels coming in on a Tuesday on a week where we don't have school on Friday. We're gonna be reading Creepy Pair of Underwear today and doing some fun things with that book, so I'm excited for that. I also have some more conferences today, which after having my two yesterday, like I really, I know I don't stress about conferences anymore. I feel like my first year I stressed about them and then the second year, like maybe a little bit, but like I am totally, I just love getting to kind of brag on my kids to their parents. Like it's just, it's just nice. <laughs> also got some photos, which down here. Okay. So I have permission from her, but we, I have this coupon called take a selfie and then I'll take a selfie with the kids and print it and send it home with them. And I just printed a couple of photos because I have been forgetting to do it. And my kids have asked me, oh, I forgot to print one, but my kids have asked me every day. We've already read creepy what? Creepy. 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 Not creepy. Today we're going to read what? Creepy. So this book, oh, oh. this book is probably written by the same author. And it probably has the same characters but is the story the same no. no no and this story jasper has a different problem huh yes okay i know some of you have already read this book which is why we're not reading it every single day this week we're going to be comparing this book 
and creepy carrots and telling how they're the same and how they're maybe different. At the end of the week on, well, maybe tomorrow or Thursday, you guys are going to get to choose which book you like the best. You get to do another book review, and whichever book you choose, you'll either get to make a creepy carrot or a creepy underwear to go with your book review, okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, Creepy pair of underwear. Your creepiest proud laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> Actually, a couple of problems in our story. I want you to turn and tell your friend what was one problem. He was scared of the underwear. So, what was his solution to the problem? Which of his solutions worked? Who remembers what the solution was that worked? And then he put it down there, and then he he put all the dirt back, and then he went. Exactly. That was the thing that worked, but then he actually had another problem. He realized something else. What did he realize? Our creepy underwear because of that green scroll, and then he went to the store to buy more. Yeah, he liked the underwear because he was what? Um, scared of the dark. Yes, that so was his other problem, right? And do you know his solution? Yeah, and yeah, so in the beginning, Jasper's um, problem was he was scared of the underwear, but then he was scared of the dark. So he actually had two problems and two solutions. Why do you think the author would write a book about a rabbit with creepy, glowing, ghoulish underwear? Say me an idea. Main idea. What is the most important thing the author wants us to know? Why did he write this book for us? Um, his name is Aaron Reynolds. Why would Aaron write this book for us? Yeah, he wanted to make a creepy book. Sometimes authors can write books just for fun. I'm oh, okay, so she's saying maybe something like this happened to him, so he wanted to write about it. Do authors write about things that happen to them sometimes? Yes. Yeah, all the time. Those are all really, really great ideas. All right, today we are going to write... But I... About Jasper's problem and how he fixed it. You can choose. Miss Call loves to give you a choice. You can choose if you want to write about him being scared of underwear or scared of the dark. You have to write what his problem was and how he fixed it. Do I want you to rush? No. Do I want you to rush? No. I want you to take your time. You can tell me what we talked about yesterday in science. What did we learn about? Telescopes, good. A telescope is a what? Long. It's long, but what is it? It's called a telescope. It's a tool. It's a tool that helps us see things that are far away. And yesterday we talked about how way long ago people thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. Is that true? No. No. Does do things revolve around the earth? No. The moon does. Yeah, there you go. The, the moon does. And the earth is moving around the what? The sun. The sun. Today we're going to learn more about telescopes and how we can use them to see things that are in the night sky. Your eyes are? No. Your voices are? Oh. You cannot see how big it really is. Look at the moon. What does it look like? Is it bright? Is it shaped like a ball? If we were to get far enough away from the Earth, we should be able to actually see the Earth spinning. By going up into space and looking back at the Earth, we can see direct evidence that the Wait, Earth is moving, video? not the sun. Just like the train example. So most people thought that what moved? The sun. The sun. But Galileo and Copernicus thought that what moved? The earth. the earth, but they couldn't prove, prove it. it. They couldn't prove, prove it, it, right? It was just it was just a scientific guess that they had. When we launched a rocket into space, what could we see? The earth moving. Yeah, the earth was actually spinning. So they were right. they were right. But for thousands of years, people thought that the sun was moving. Oh, no, Galileo was lit. Galileo said, mm -mm, I think something different. Have light shining on your face right now. No. No. Okay, I want you to rotate back to the sun. What do you think now? Sunrise. 
Daytime. Daytime. It's so bright, right? How much money would I need if I wanted fries and a drink? Turn and talk to your partner. How much money would I need if I wanted fries and nope, nope. Sorry, it's my turn. How much money would I need if I wanted fries and a drink? Eight what? Eight dollars. How did you get eight dollars? Where'd you get four plus four? What is four? It says right there that there's four and right there. Thank you, see? So she said, fries are four dollars. Hello, happy Wednesday. I didn't get a chance to check in with you yesterday after school. I think I filmed, I don't know, a little bit of science, a little bit of math. My phone died during math, so I don't even know what I got. <laughs> Hopefully you could see something. I had a parent-teacher conference right after school, and I have a couple more parent-teacher conferences today. The thing that I always feel whenever I do parent-teacher conferences, because obviously you talk about the student a little bit, but you get to learn more about them and their family, and I just always feel like parent-teacher conferences are so nice because day to day, like you know the kids in your classroom as, for the most part, as the kids in your classroom. And of course you hear like about their lives and about their brothers or their sisters, but I like kind of getting a bigger picture of the students in my class because when they are here sitting and learning, they're doing what I want them to do. They're totally different kids outside of school. And so it's always nice to kind of be brought back to, hey, we are teaching children. Like they are literally children with whole other lives. Cause I feel like sometimes our expectations, again, good to have high expectations, but sometimes it's so much that you forget, like you are just teaching children. So a couple of things I need to do. We're doing um, Rock Your School Day on October 21st. So I need to get a text message group together with parents so that they can come and like make decorations and decorate our halls. And I need to get a form together for garden club. I need to update my AR tracker. I need to do so many just like little housekeeping things. That's the part of teaching that really like I struggle with is all the little housekeeping duties. So that's what I'm going to buckle down and focus and do now. Also, before I do that, we went to Trader Joe's last night. This has them for like 79 cents. I bought those and this one, I heirloom maybe, and then this thing. We're gonna be talking about pumpkins soon and I'm gonna do like a little pumpkin exploration. I wanted to do one with like the moon, but I didn't. Um, but let me kind of explain my idea. Last year, when I was doing my combo class with kindergarten and first grade, we were about to learn about butterflies. So I went to the library and I got a ton of nonfiction books on butterflies. I had magnifying glasses. I had things that they could touch and feel and look at. And I just let them kind of go at it and explore and like read books and kind of talk to me about what they saw or about what they noticed. And they loved it so much. And it was such a nice way to get them like exploring and interested in something. I mean, of course they're gonna be interested in butterflies, but it was just a really fun thing and it led to really good conversations too. So I'm gonna do the same thing with our pumpkins. It's getting late. Good, nice superhero A sounds late. But I don't care. Good, A. Strong superhero sound. The E is telling the A to say it's Name. At the end of a word, Y can say E or I or E or I or E. So we're going to read it again. And if we find any of those tricky Ys, we're just going to color the Y. Are you ready? We see a, uh, we see a Y. Are we coloring every Y? No. No, only the endings that say E or I, I or E or I. I see a Y. Okay, ready? Back to the top. Five round pumpkins. Five round pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one announced, oh my. I'm in shock as well. Zip my mouth up. Zip it, lock, lock it. it. Put it in your pocket. Wait, if you zip it? You did not zip it. Zip it, lock it. Lock, lock it. Okay, you zipped it. You have to lock it. Only I have the key. Okay. Zip it. Lock it. I don't have a pocket. I don't have a pocket. I have the key. Curved line on both sides, and that makes the shape of the underwear. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, if you're a creepy carrot. 
You also get, this call is letting you design it. So this part is just for the carrot, the bottom piece, right? So you can either choose to cut and use this as the top, and then you could cut a nice long carrot, or you can make it a short carrot, or you can draw a carrot. Hold on, please. Or you could draw a carrot and then cut it out. This is just for the carrot's body. Does that make sense? Yes. We're totally designing it by your? No. Um, for my carrot friends or underwear friends, I only have a couple of these. If you want to just design your own eyes on your own paper, you can do that. Or if you just want just normal ones, I have some of these for you. My creepy underwear friends, if you want to design your own creepy underwear, you can. Does Ms. Call want you to scribble? No. No. I have a couple, not a lot, but I have a couple of these in case you would like your creepy underwear to have these eyes, teeth, mouth. But can you design your own? Yes. Absolutely. Can you make it as a girl or like what? Yeah, you can make it a girl if or you want to. I have like little like hair on like that underwear has like those straight lines. The Whatever thing. you want to. When we compare, we tell how things are the same. Or, or, or different. So together, we're gonna talk about how things in both books were the same or different. And to do that, we are going to use something called a Venn diagram. Say it. Venn diagram. Say it. Venn diagram. Okay, it looks like this. One circle is going to be just for our book, The Creepy Carrots, and one circle is going to be just for our book, Creepy Pair of Underwear. So here is our circle. Actually, I'll use, do I have orange? I don't have orange, that's okay. I'll use red. Creepy, creepy carrots. And our other circle is for? The underwear. I don't think we have used green yet. It's kind of hard to see, that's okay. All right. So on this side, we're gonna put things that were only in creepy underwear. On this side, we're gonna put things that were only in creepy carrots. And in the middle, we're gonna say what they both had. So both books were what? They both had the bunny. They both had Jasper, right? So both books had Jasper. Both books had Jasper. Um, both books had mom and dad. Mom and dad. Both books had mom and dad. Both books were what? Scary. Both books were scary. And Jasper and something that he them. Yeah, Jasper. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So in the first book he built the fence, and in the second book he dug a hole. Right. So he tried to trap. Trap. So Jasper trap. I'll say trapped. Before I add my ending, I need to double the letter. Jasper trapped. Trapped things in both books, right? Okay. Let's talk about what was just in creepy carrots. What was something that only happened in creepy carrots? Defense. If you want to use a pen, you can. When I give you your paper. Miss Cole knows the friends that are constantly playing. Zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket. Um, you can put your name on the back. Okay. Today, we're going to subtract some of those prices to see what I can buy with $20. If I have $20, Thumbs up by your heart. What's something I could buy? I have eight dollars left. Can I buy anything else? You could buy a drink. Oh, a drink? How much is a drink? Four dollars. Oh, four dollars. So if I have eight dollars and I want to drop buy a drink, that's four dollars. Wait, where's the drink? That's four dollars. What would my number sentence be? I want you to figure it out and show me on your fingers how many. How much money do I have left? Four. Four dollars. It's the dollar sign, right? Sometimes it looks like this. This kind of looks like the letter S. It can look like this, or it can look like this. 
Sometimes it looks like this, but that's all the dollar sign, okay? Okay, time for our fact. That's expensive, huh? Six, my first sentence is addition or subtraction. So I need to start with the what? I need to start with the what? Small numbers. A number plus a number equals a number. What can I say? Thumbs up by your How can I use all my numbers in my fact family to make a true sentence? Try again. Four plus? Oh, two equals six. Let's see if that works. Four plus one, two. Does that equal six? Yes. Or I could say, I could say two plus four equals six. Two plus one, two, three, four. Four equals six. And now I'm doing subtraction, so I need to start with a bigger number. So I, or I could say, class, three plus five equals eight. Sorry, sometimes Miss Paul has trouble writing her numbers. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, for subtraction, what can I say? Eight minus five equals eight. Or I could say, eight minus three equals five. Okay, end of the day. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure what I got for you. It's really hard for me to keep track of things during conference week. I'm just, it's all conferences and, and that's all my brain can hold. I got a little bit of poetry. Um, we did novel effect for our read aloud. They made creepy carrots and creepy underwear today. They did creepy comparisons. They wrote about what was the same and different in the books. Both books had Jasper and mom and dad. Both books were scary and creepy. Both books had a trap in it. In one book, he had a plan and the plan was Jasper's plan. He made a fence. Um, so they told what was the same and what was different. So again, I'm really loving the math talks that I'm doing now because it brings in more real world to them, which I felt like was always my struggle about how to say like, oh, like this will help you later on during this, but this it's more real world, world problems to begin with. Um, we did centers, we did math. They asked me yesterday, Miss Call, when are we gonna do 99 math again? Because our Chromebooks were just always dying and now that we have a Chromebook card, we can do it. So we did it today. I told them first thing, so they were excited about it all day long. We did addition and subtraction within 10 and they're getting so much better at it. And what I love during the parent-teacher conferences I had, I actually pulled up our 99 math session because I can show them. It's one of the initial reports. So this student is solving more problems than other students are. They're just really fast with these math facts. But it also gives you the accuracy. And you can see my kids who are doing it, even though they're not doing as many problems, they're still being accurate. But it also breaks down the individual report. And then you get down here to these ones who are just struggling with it, which they still think it's fun. So it'll break down the report even more for you. And if you click on it, you can see. So this student, these are the problems that they did, and this is how long it took them. So she did two minus one equals one in four seconds. And then she did eight minus three equals five in eight seconds. It's a really nice little breakdown that it gives you in 99 math and it will save your reports. And initially when I started using it, I didn't know it, it could save my reports, but it does. And so that's been really, really nice. So um, I shared that data with them and yeah, conferences today went I think really well really the first conference I don't know if I mentioned it probably but really the first conference I just want to brag as much as I can on them for things and just get that get that relationship going because some of these parents the last time that I saw them was meet the teacher I probably talk with a lot of them pretty often on dojo but some of them I don't so it's nice to just touch base and tell them some good things and build up that relationship a little bit more. That's it for today. Tomorrow is going to be our Friday. I'll be here early because I have a lot to do, but for now I'm going to go home, cook dinner, and relax. And hello. Today's Thursday, which is my Friday. Um, I'm actually excited because I got some more magnets. These are from Terry. Um, so Terry, I really appreciate you sending these. These little magnets have become one of my like teaching must-haves. I never have enough just like little simple basic magnets like this and I had bought a set myself and I like used them all within like two days and so this is really really nice to have so if you're out there and you're like you know I just want to get somebody something get them some magnets because I I have always needed these thing is from Kayla she sent me this Charmander which goes with my like Pokemon room transformation that I do more towards the end of the year when we do measurement, but this is awesome. And then she sent me some more crayons for our crayon hotel. You can buy certain colors on Amazon. So she got me black, yeah, black and brown. Um, so 
that's super helpful. And then she actually sent some black cardstock, which I did get earlier and I used it yesterday. <laughs> like I've already used some of it. So it's all so, so helpful. Thank you guys so much. We, oh, I also got some books. These I ordered myself, um, looking through telescope, which we've already read, but now we have it. Um, Big Dipper and then the moon book. We're doing the moon next week. So all of that I bought. The parent coming in to help me. I'm not prepped for next week though. So oops. <laughs> this week kind of feels a little chaotic to me. That's okay. I was mostly just hoping to be able to share some parent teacher conference stuff with you guys. Gosh, I am <laughs> the worst vlogger ever, but parent teacher conference week. If you know, you know. Um, so today is Friday. It's the end of the day on Friday. I've been in conferences since like 8.20 this morning, so I'm so ready to go home. But I will say, I enjoyed every single one of my conferences this year. It is one of my favorite, I think I said it a little bit before too, but it's one of my favorite things to just hear more about their life or more about their experience at kindergarten and hearing about the differences between home and school. All that is so interesting to me. And I've said before on this vlog too, like this class is one that I bonded with so quickly and I feel like I can just remember more things about like these individual students than I feel like I have in the past. And it's just really, really great to be able to take the first conference and brag on the kids and how well they're doing and I kept telling parents I was like you know it's it's hard to believe it's already October but it's also crazy to think that we've made so much progress so quickly because we have so it's really encouraging hopefully I'm not too repetitive in this vlog but I just kind of wanted to share my conference experience and give you kind of as many examples as I could um, so lots of times parents are concerned with are they where they should be are they how are they compared to their peers what is something I can do at home I had one who was really pushing me on the homework and I was kind of explaining like school is their job this is where they come they're expected to be on it all day long so that when they go home like their job is to be a kid and that is something like as a school we are on the same page about it and it's really helpful in the primary grades not to have homework for these like five six seven year old kids because they at the end of the day they are kids and like some of the things that like the kids in my class are struggling with whether it be like behavior or focus or things like that like they are still like five six and seven year olds so I try really hard and I try to make it a point to make sure my parents know no matter who their kid is or what kind of student they are or what they know or don't know, I try to make it a point that there are things that they are all, sorry, I'm like dying of thirst. There are things that they are all improving on. There are things, there are areas that they've grown in either socially, academically, and I just wanna tell the parents the very first meeting, I am so proud of them. Some of the parents um, were telling me like, oh, like kindergarten was a really hard experience last year, or um, their, their child never wanted to go to school, or they, like, there's so many things that like, outside of academics, we can talk about and acknowledge this child's effort in and I do obviously our parent teacher conferences they're centered around the academics I share their scores I share their data um, and if you know if that's something that they're making really really good progress in, I make sure to emphasize that like they are doing really really well and some of them I told them I was like you know they came in knowing this much and there's a couple of gaps we need to fill here and this is what we need to do but this is nitpicky and I make sure they know like they're not behind they are like exceeding expectations I'm nitpicking here I want you to know that there's there's a couple of things that we're focusing on but overall they're doing a really really good job. It's about every single one of my parents told me in some way shape or form the positive impact that either I've had on them or like being in this classroom has had on them and of course that's like really good for you know like my teacher ego but it's also just really nice because school should be the place where they feel comfortable. School should be the place where they feel safe and school should be the place where they want to be and they should know that like their teacher cares for them and their teacher is proud of them and that even the, the peers in their class, they're rooting them on. I just, like, that's my number one thing. Some conversations, like, it's hard. It's hard to tell them and show them the data and say, like, hey, you know, this is where we typically expect them to come in. This is where they came in. This is where we typically expect them to be at this point. This is where they are. But I really, really try to make it more of a, how can I support you 
kind of conversation. That's one of the big things I would say is during parent-teacher conferences is really not just sharing, they're here, they should be here, they're not here, but really sharing like what you can do to support them, what I'm doing to support them, really offering my help and assistance and giving them app ideas and giving them like, for example, um, some of my kids with CBC words, I was like, I know like sometimes it's really, sometimes it's really hard on paper and pencil and I think that this app would be really, really great because it's, it's called Blending Board and I've shared about it on my channel. But you can change just the vowel sound, you can change the the beginning, oh gosh, <laughs> you can change the beginning and ending sounds, um, and the student can do it, or you can do it with them, so I recommended this to a couple of them, just to get them paying attention to the, the letters and the words, and we've done some of this here in class, not as much as we used to in the beginning of the year, but we've done some of that in class, and they respond usually pretty well. There's half pint decodables online, the same ones we use in class, um, but the decodables are online, so I was like, okay, I'll add this to the Clever for you, add this to the Clever, which is where students can log in um, and see like the apps and things that we have at school. I've gotten really, really good feedback on the Teacher Monster app. The Teacher Monster online is free, but the app costs money. A lot of times throughout the year, they'll put it on sale for free, and I let my parents know like, hey, this app is free right now, go download it. I've gotten really great feedback of them doing that at home and loving it. There's different things that I, that I try to suggest to as many parents as possible, but um, those are some of them. And then for a lot of students in kindergarten, first grade, a big thing that we talk about is like focus and fine motor. So some of the suggestions that I give parents for focusing, um, a big one is puzzles, like have them sit and do a puzzle because that's really hard for some kids, but it'll improve their focus and fine motor. Um, one that I like is like ripping up mail or ripping up newspaper. Do we still get newspapers? Um, doing the hole puncher, like like this and making confetti that's really good for fine motor the monkey bars are really good for fine motor um, a lot of kids make me bracelets the bracelets <laughs> really great for fine motor have them draw something random or with their eyes closed or ask them to close their eyes and draw a cat and then take scissors and cut it out practice turning the paper not turning the scissors there's there's all sorts of things that I recommend to a lot of parents so I wanted to share some of those with you here because it's helpful to hear how other teachers are supporting their students and their parents and I try to always open with how are you do you have anything you really want to talk about is there anything you'd like to learn more about how we do in the classroom is there anything I can clarify for you what is something that you like might be concerned about or want to talk about more and then I move into things that they're doing really well and I show them that data and then I show them um, things that we're working on and I always say this is something we can work together to improve because I fully believe that a child should see the parent and the teacher as a group of people working together to support them and some of them brought you know their child with them and some of them didn't and if they did bring them with them I was trying to be really really outspoken about how well they were doing or um, things that they're doing really well and 90% of the kids that were in here with their parents were so shy like so shy and it's it's so funny to see it because I know that the students they're not quite sure or the children, they're not quite sure what to expect and they're nervous because, you know, it's this, your your parent and your teacher are talking and you hope it's good and start it, I always end it with, let me know if there's anything you need, however I can support you. I mean, you can always message me on Dojo, you're welcome in our classroom. I, I kind of do all those things uh, the same for every, for every conference. I've made posts about conferences before, but I all take notes on anything that they want me to do for them or anything that they say they'll do for me. Um, and yeah, hopefully my goal, again, my goal is just to make it a positive experience and I had really great experiences with all my conferences. So vlog this week turned into a parent teacher conference vlog, but I think that's, I think it's helpful to hear if there's anything that you're curious about, let me know down below. Also, so many of my parents, they like, they told me, they were like, oh yeah, like I watch your YouTube videos or like I follow you on Instagram or I do this and that. And, it's always intimidating to me because I'm like, oh my gosh, like they can see when I'm having like a hard day or they can see when like the kids are listening and when they're not listening, it makes me nervous, but it's also kind of, it's kind of neat to see that like they care and like they want to see. So yeah, if you're watching, thank you for everything you do. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video, as always, I hope it was helpful. If it was, please leave me a like, leave me a comment down below. How do you run your conferences? Do you do it similar or different? Is there something you're curious about that I didn't mention? I'm really tired. I would love to know 
if your school is one of those schools who like they'll pay you to stay after school or they will give you half days because I've had that before or if they do parent teacher conferences we didn't do them at my last school or if you get a whole day like I do how is it kind of set up where you are and do you like it because I am struggling right now to talk to you because I've been talking all day long to parents so I'm like more like this the whole time so my cheeks are very sore but I do it for you so subscribe join the family down below and I will see you in the next one